Hello, <clears throat> everyone. I had a thought this morning and I wanted to share. I want to share it with others. And this thought is about shame. Because when I think about it, <clears throat> it seems to me that shame is one of the major blocking factors for growth in humans and in humanity in general. Shame. Because it seems to me that what is shamed tends to be hidden. And what is hidden tends to be neglected. And what is neglected tends to decay. Mm. And this chain of causality can bring one to realize the, the core causes <clears throat> of parts of our society of, or of our communities or of our own selves that seem to be in decay, that seem to be insufficient, that seem to be not working properly, functioning incorrectly. <clears throat> and examples of these in my mind arise such as impoverished uh, segments of a population parts of a population that live in squalor and that mm, can barely find enough resources for them to subsist and to survive. <clears throat> These segments of the population tend to be neglected. they tend to be hidden. And I believe that at certain levels they tend to be shamed. A shameful part of the population. At the level of oneself, one can find examples and a limitless amount of possibilities. Because one can be ashamed whenever there is a discrepancy between what one expects of a part of oneself, of whatever one has absorbed as one's identity, when there is an expectation upon that part of myself. And when its function does not match quite up to it, when this discrepancy happens, there's a discordance. There is a mismatch that produces tension and wishes to be resolved in some way. And this tension is uncomfortable. And if one finds no quick easy, obvious solution <clears throat> at first light, then a common reaction is to say, oh, I don't like this tension, I don't like this mismatch, well, I will just hide it. And 
not expose it to the world, not allow it to be seen. And when one hides things from the world, they're like boxes we place in the corner of the basement. <clears throat> we don't see them very often. We can forget that they are there. And it is easy for pests and humidity <clears throat> to get into it and rot them gradually for them to decay. And if that happens, well, we suffer. <laughs> We suffer because that part of oneself that we do not expose, that part of ourselves that we are not accepting as something we want to expose, we still consider it part of ourselves. Otherwise, we would not have the shame. And while we consider it part of ourselves, and while it decays, we suffer. We decay as a whole. And if the shame and the reactions that we have to it are unconscious, then we unconsciously just have this knee-jerk reaction that whenever shame is trying to the shame is trying to come up and tell us, or this, the signals that trigger the shame, that discrepancy, the tension comes up, our knee-jerk reaction is just hide, 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 push it, just push it further. No, I don't want to. See it? No, it's not part of me. It's not. I don't want it. <clears throat> and one can do that forever. And the signal will get stronger because the decay will continue. And the infection, if I would so call it, will continue there because one is not giving it attention. It's not giving it the attention that it's asking for. The shame is not the source, the shame is the reaction that we have to that tension, to that discomfort that is there, to that discomfort that is trying to resolve itself. <clears throat> the discomfort, the tension is seeking a resolution and is asking for a resolution. And shame is the emotional reaction that hides it. Because we can. <laughs> because if we do so, then we can forget it for a while and continue to do other things in the world and not just not care about that thing. But if we do that, unconscientiously <clears throat> and we allow those things to be forgotten to be neglected then decay follows <clears throat> and the tension that was there it will continue it will continue to be there and it will continue to cause discomfort even at unconscious levels it continues to drain energy like a forgotten light bulb somewhere it continues to drain energy because it requires energy to keep something hidden it requires energy for that shame even at unconscious levels to come up and realize oh oh yeah there's something tension yeah there's something to hide okay hide oh tension well hide hide and 
one can observe that in oneself when one is walking in the street for example and one is interacting with people <clears throat> interaction with people is the ah, monitor <laughs> there <clears throat> interaction with people is a uh, no, good place to find these sources of shame because it is people exactly it is other other humans that we are looking to hide these things from they are the observers that we do not want this part of ourselves to be shown to <clears throat> so when we are in the street and when we are looking around and faced with all these of these rays of glazing and tracing and raising eyes <clears throat> We will have reactions in oneself and thoughts and imaginations about what could they possibly be thinking. <clears throat> or we will be thinking, thinking things about them. <laughs> Reflectively, one imagines what they are thinking. And there are countless times in, <clears throat> in my own life, I, I recall, where I'm, I see, I find myself hiding something, something. What? It can be anything. It can be oh, I. <clears throat> I I want to hide the fact that that my I don't know that my clothes don't match. Or that my clothes are torn, for example. <clears throat> or that oh, she she caught me looking at her. Oh, she's I, I don't know. I'm I, I'm embarrassed <clears throat> because now maybe she believes that I am. <clears throat> that I'm attracted to her and that I'm yearning for her and uh, <clears throat> and that might be and that might be lie these be lying? No. Or that might betray. <laughs> that might betray these hidden desires that I have that I myself do not accept. All of these little examples that one can find <clears throat> in oneself, they, they can be any kind. I only mentioned a few, but they can be, oh, do I look too poor, or do I look too rich, or do I look too different, or I'm the only man in, man in this place full of women, or, or, or the other way around, I'm the only woman in this group of men. Or will someone notice that that I that my am limping? Or will someone notice that I'm not um, that I'm very old, or that I'm very young, or that I have no idea what I'm doing? <laughs> That's a common one in the workplace. Wonderful <laughs> people know that I have no idea what I'm doing. <clears throat> it's different for every person, and each person will be able to find their own. But the point is that we humans, we hide these, we, we, shame gives us an impulse to hide. In that moment when we feel, what would they think if, what, what if, what if they see that, but, but, but what if, what, what if he notices that, that, that thing, what is it that we're hiding, that thing? Because our, when we, when our knee-jerk reactions come up, our, our react, our, tendencies to think about what are they thinking, what are they going to say, what are they are, what is their uh, focus, what is their attention. And that's not relevant to us, relatively, relatively to what we think of ourselves. It is our own relationship to oneself 
that matters the most. That matters even at a, a level, even that the only attention that actually matters is one's own. <clears throat> because it is only oneself that can take care of these things and that suffers when these things are not being taken care of. So I believe it is important that each of us learns to notice what we are hiding from others. What are we trying to hide? And not really from others. Because the reaction to hide it from others is really an, uh, a reflection or an extrapolation of one's attempt to hide it from oneself. If we do not accept it, then we will not allow others to see it. We want to forget it ourselves. I don't want to forget that my leg is hurt. I, I don't want to forget. I want. I don't want. I don't want to know. That, I, don't, I don't want my leg to be hurt, for example. Or I don't want to to not know what I'm doing. So many things. <clears throat> I stumbled across a topic while I was speaking about how I can see a woman, for instance, and then they notice that I'm looking at them and then I avert my eyes and I hide and I, and <clears throat> a bit of me feels like I want to hide the fact that I was attracted to her image, to this person. <clears throat> and then realizing, okay, well, I was hiding something. What was I hiding? And an example that... Does that apply to me? I'm sure that certainly applied to me. <clears throat> what I'm hiding is the, that desire for... <clears throat> Possession. There's a desire for possession that sometimes came up in me that wanted to mm, to have that woman. And the shame that came up in me when I saw them wanted to hide that, wanted to pretend that it was not there, that I was just simply a, an innocent bystander. But that desire to possess was there. And I was trying to hide it. And I mention it not as a focus on myself, but because I think it comes across a topic, a very important topic, about how we humans tend to hide sexuality as a whole. Sexuality, the, 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 the emotional, the desire part of our sexuality. The, the animal desires that live in these, in these bodies that we have. <clears throat> There's this unspoken expectation across modern humanity that we humans are rational creatures and that we do not engage with the, the, the base animal desires, which are below us, <clears throat> in a sense. But 
But believing that does not mean, does not make them, does not make these desires stop existing. Because our bodies do have these animal desires. And they do seek to be resolved, satisfied around us, with the people around us, because of the nature of sexuality. But we humans tend to hide these features of ourselves, these aspects. We tend to hide our sexuality in the emotional realm, in the physical realm, and we tend to even to, to, to hide the argent, argentalia. We do. It is, <laughs> it is most often in most societies illegal to walk around with exposed genitalia. <laughs> it has it has been <laughs> concretized in the legal system, the shame of part of us. We all have genitalia. And we have been hiding it for a long time. So much that we don't even remember. Did we forget that our genitalia are part of us, as integral a part of us as any other thing, as a hand, as an eye, as a tooth, as a anus. They are part of our bodies. And the long-lasting habit societal habit of hiding our genitalia from everyone imposed by parents upon their children when they are oh so young has kept this habit this shame societal shame alive for a long long time now I don't mean to say <laughs> that, hey, <laughs> there should be no shame of this. <laughs> Remove the laws. People should walk around naked. Should be able to walk around naked. Mm -mm. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I believe I want to <clears throat> transmit the message of the source of these phenomena. <clears throat> there is something that we hide, there is something that we do not accept in ourselves, in what we have believed to be our identity. We do, because that thing, that thing, the thing that it is and the thing that we expect it to be, oh, the animal base level desire send Genitalia. <clears throat> that can produce oh so much lust and so much uh, um, depravity. And oh the rational beings that we believe that we are and we should be. They don't match. So hit it. I feel it's quite useful to see these uh, dynamics in this light. In general, they are not viewed in most any light. <laughs> That's the point of shame. <laughs> it attempts to remove the light, to hide things from the light.
You can't have shame of anything. Absolutely anything. Because we are free to place our expectations anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. Wherever. Whatever something is, we can place our expectations anywhere. And if our expectations happen to be, just happen to be in a different place, oh, tension, discordance, these do not match. <clears throat> Shame is not the only response to discrepancies, of course. Well, and also choose to try to match this the the reality to the expectation to to in a sense raise the function of the thing to to what we expect it to be to what we want it to be that's also doable sometimes or one can release these expectations not have them be here and then this thing is free to be whatever it is <laughs> without any necessary tension if we release our expectations on it i guess we can also just change our expectations to match all of these are possible the issue is if we recognize where it comes from then we have a um, a variety of choices that we can make in order to resolve this tension. But why, if it's kept in, at an unconscious level, while it is kept in an unconscious level, <clears throat> the reaction can continue to be shame and to hide. There's something that can also, of course, be anger, defensiveness. <clears throat> or blatant display of it in a manner that is actually trying to hide the shame <laughs> that is wanting to hide the core issue. <clears throat> but the point is, I believe that understanding where all of these things that we hide come from, what is the drive behind, the, behind us wanting to hide these things, can help us better understand part of what what constrains us, what restrains us. Part of why we do not allow ourselves to do some things, even when our desires are moving us in that direction, when our aspirations are are asking us to move in a certain directions and we find blockages, blockages of some kind or another. We do not dare or we're not good enough or or that's not for me. <clears throat> some of these can be attributed to shame. Moreover, <clears throat> if we understand the reaction of shame as us wanting to protect our identity in a way from part of ourselves, 
because that's what shame is. We are repelling part of ourselves from ourselves or attempting to in any case. my train of thought. <laughs> and I feel ashamed about that. The point is, if we shame something and we hide it, it can become neglected and it can decay. And if there's something within us that decays, we suffer. In the short, medium, or long term, we suffer. Most importantly, we prevent, we hinder our own growth. Because this tension that we have hidden still lives. And it will remain there until it is resolved. And so one can, one can take the conscious choice of actually understanding it and then looking for a resolution, be it either in the removal of the expectation <clears throat> or in the matching of the expectation or of the changing of the function, of the reality of, of the thing. <clears throat> and in one of these resolutions, the one when the expectation is released, I think it's worth mentioning that in that case, what one is doing is one is releasing part of one's own identity. Because we tend to identify we ourselves, we humans, with many things. We tend to stick to things in the world and believe that they are us. We believe that we are our bodies. We believe that we are the friendships that we have. We believe that we are the, uh, the possessions that we have, the things. <clears throat> we believe that we are the skills that we have. We believe that we are the reputation that we have. We believe that we are the the prestige, the certificates that we have acquired. We believe that we are the professional relationships that we've acquired. We believe that we are the, the monetary income that, that flows through us. We believe that we are the impact that we have made on other people. We believe that we are the, the nation that we associate ourselves with. We believe that we are the sports team that we associate ourselves with. We believe that we are the family that we belong to. We believe that we are our ideas. We believe that we are our emotions. We believe that we are our desires, that we are our fears. are, the more we need to maintain because we, the nature of oneself is to have oneself be good, be proper, be correct, 
because incorrectness brings tension and tension brings discomfort and we reject discomfort <clears throat> so we are naturally looking for to keep ourselves correct but if we believed ourselves to be all of these things then it can happen that our urge to make things correct and to make things work in the expected way to to <clears throat> hold all of these functions to all of these expectations it can happen that it, it's, it's unconscious because we believe that we are those things it's not that oh well, this thing is there and I think I can improve it and I will do so with conscious choice but rather oh I believe I am that thing oh and it's and it's not the right way oh I don't like that okay I will hide that from the world because it's mine and I get and I don't want other people to see that this thing that I that I am is incorrect one would rather not even see oneself seeing it as incorrect but in the end it's up, it's up to oneself how one chooses to see it yes Any shame that lives in us, that persists in us, um, drains energy from us. Because it takes energy to keep things hidden. Because that what which we are trying to hide actually has an attention in it. It requires some kind of energy to keep it hidden and but <clears throat> if we go inside and explore these things that we believe that we are and that are causing these tensions and discomforts and we truly try to understand where they come from then we might find many things we might find that many of them are perhaps obsolete irrelevant lost in the past that doesn't matter anymore or we may find that many of them are actually quite solvable The problem with shame is that it hides these tensions, these discomforts even from oneself, from ourselves. And if it's and if we hide it from ourselves, then we forget it. And if we forget a problem, it is not solved. It is neglected. And anything neglected decays. Hence, I think it's important to explore the shame thing ourselves. All of these things I've <clears throat> mentioned about the human individual find correspondences in larger human units. They are to be found in families, they are to be found in couples, they are to be found in communities, in clubs, sports clubs, 
associations, cities, towns, races as a whole, nationalities. and the entire world. There are parts of ourselves that we feel the urge to reject from ourselves because we feel that they are incorrect. But the urge to hide that which produces tension and discomfort only allows that tension and discomfort to continue unconsciously. It's important to mention also that <laughs> one shame that is uh, sometimes forgotten is the shame of shame itself. Oh, I have shame. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. oh okay. I found that I am ashamed of uh, that, um, that I don't have enough money. Okay. I'm ashamed of that. But then I, realize, then I look into my shame and I'm like, oh, I'm ashamed that I don't have enough money. Oh, I'm ashamed. Oh, God, I don't want to be ashamed of that. And then I have another thing to hide. doesn't solve the problem. <laughs> that shame should not be shamed. If one wishes to truly resolve it. And it takes attention to realize what is going on within ourselves at these deep, uncomfortable levels. And it takes persistence to go into these topics in oneself and to not be swept away by the strong emotions that make us want to, to fear that thing or to blame that thing, or to be angry at that thing, or to distract ourselves with another thing. It takes <clears throat> focus to dig in order to understand oneself, in order to help oneself remove those constraints that prevent one's growth and prevent one's life from being what it truly wants to be. That's all.